And we are going to start out this evening with some fall student athlete recognition. I think we have uh, Coach Kreider and Coach Jones representing cross country, or if you have student representatives, if you want to come forward to the podium. Are they here? Yep, yeah, come on up. Yeah, if you have student representatives that are speaking about their awesome season, um, then come on up to the podium. And you can all come up there and hang out together. We like to see you. So come on, you can come up, stand right behind her. Yeah. Uh huh. Lisa, is the mic on for that one? Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Dr. Ray. I'm a junior at Bruce Mason, and I'm the captain of the varsity student hockey team. The Mason field hockey team. Um, <laughs> we were a club team for our first two seasons, and being a club team basically means that very few people at Mason knew we existed. But it also means that as a player, and most likely your parents, take care of everything from uniforms to getting to games. And there were, in particular, a couple parents who played a very vital role in those first two seasons. So a special thank you to Sue Newhart, Greg Kelly, Laura Stryker, Christine Jones, and countless others who worked extremely hard to do everything from scheduling games, arranging playing fields, and lining up referees, to ensuring that players had uniforms and rides to games. Over those two years, the team improved immensely. And then this past summer, due to the strong support of GM's athletic director, Tom Horn, we were able to become a varsity sport faster than anyone thought would be possible. And we were extremely fortunate to have two new great coaches, Coach Kreider and Coach Jones, who stuck with us throughout the moaning, complaining, and eye rolling of the preseason running, and who didn't even raise their voices when we kind of lost by a lot in our first couple games <laughs> to larger schools with more established field hockey teams. And when the season started, kids in my homeroom, when someone would announce, like Sarah McCreese, my co-captain, that we had a field hockey game tonight, they would say, oh, Mason has a field hockey team, to me, not knowing that I was on the team. But by the end of the season, I'm happy to say that a lot of those students ended up coming to our games and having a lot of fun. And as a team, we grew stronger on the field together. We went from a club team of players who barely knew how to hold a field hockey stick to being able to take the ball down the field, get shots on goal, and even score sometimes. We took inspiration from Coach Kreider's quote of the day, and the season had a number of firsts, including our first win, which was an 8-0 shutout, demonstrating how well we played together as a team, as so many different players were able to score. We had our first field hockey playoff game, which we won, and um, while we lost in the next round, we gave a very highly ranked team a run for their money, and best of all, we got to stop at Sheets on the way home from Williamsburg. <laughs> <laughs> All of this to say we had a lot of fun this past season. Though we are sad to say goodbye to my co-captain and sole senior on the team this year, Sarah McCreese, we have a lot of talented players returning in the fall and are looking forward to another season of field hockey. So thank you. Thank you, Emma. Can you guys hear me? OK. I'm Amanda Kreider and I'm the head field hockey coach for George Mason High School. Thank you so much for having us. As Emma said, I'd like to start off with a little quote. Can we like to guess who did it? Dr. Seuss? No, it's not Dr. Seuss. <laughs> <laughs> great moments are born from great opportunities. Miracle. Yeah, Miracle is the coach for Miracle. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> When we start out the season, we have 46 girls as part of the varsity and JV field hockey teams. We had a fantastic season, seeing lots of improvements in both stick skills, character traits, and just developing as young ladies and young women. So um, we went, moved on to regionals, and we actually made it to the second round, which was absolutely fantastic. I don't know about you guys, I was really excited about that one. <laughs> so um, statistically, our mile time has decreased by a minute and 40 seconds on average, which was fantastic. We also had a drill to quantitate our stick skills improvement, and those um, improved. So it's like how many you get. So does anyone know field hockey? Well, we know field hockey. <laughs> OK, so you can only hit the ball with one side of the stick. And so it's really, it makes for an interesting dodge. You have to turn your stick around. And so how many times you do that was one of the things we measured. We improved by over 30 pulls per minute throughout the whole season, which was fantastic. 
The girls are really excited for next season. A bunch of them are playing on our indoor team. And we are also planning on training in this spring, which information will come out soon. <laughs> so they are also already started running again. We had a bunch of postseason awards. Our coaches award went to Miss Julianne Kelly. <laughs> Our MVP this year was Miss Caroline Stryker. <laughs> Our second team all conference awards went to Car um, Caroline Stryker, Emma Gregg, and Callie Haskins. Our first team all conference went to our senior, Miss Sarah McCreese. It has been an absolute blessing as a coach to be part of this community, this program, and this school. And thank you so much for the opportunity as a head coach. And I think, thank you, big shout out to my assistant coach. Thank you so much. And of course, none of this could have been possible without our countless parent volunteers who really helped me get everything really together and make this a wonderful experience for our future. Thank you so much. So since, um, since you guys are so shy, if you're a member of the field hockey team, would you stand up and let us applaud you? <laughs> And next, I'll invite Coach Green for football. Hi, I'm Grant Hegler. I was a quarterback this year for the football team. And um, first, I just wanted to start out by telling you that uh, you guys, that we went six and four this year which is a huge improvement from what we've done for the past three years. I mean, coming into this year, I was 3-27 and 27 as a varsity football player. <laughs> and, I mean, it's huge when you think about I won twice as many games this year than I have for the rest of my season. And, I mean, mostly I think that was a result of two main things. And I think that came from the new coaching staff this year and just the new, I think, um, mentality that the players had. And first I'm going to start off with the coaches. I mean, I don't think we could have done – anything this year if it hadn't been for the new coaching staff. I think Coach Green really helped us out this year. He changed the way we thought about the game. He changed how we ran our practices. And I don't think it would have been possible to do anything this year without him. So I'd like to just give him a hand real quick. Uh, secondly, I'd like to talk about some of the other coaches. We had a almost completely new coaching staff this year. Uh, we had a lot more specialized coaches which focused on uh, a couple of the main positions which really helped out so we, each player got the attention that they needed. And, um, I'd also, and next I'd like to talk about the players themselves. This year, I mean, I'm proud to say I was part of the football team this year, which is something I couldn't say in previous years. I, I mean, they felt, like, they felt like my brothers this year. I wouldn't have traded them for anything. I think that um, we went through wins, we went through losses. I mean, fortunately more losses, or wins than losses this year. And um, I mean, I really consider them more than teammates, and this is the one of the years I can actually uh, truthfully say that. So I'd also like to give a hand to the rest of the team this year. I mean, and I mean, again, it's just hard to say how um, everyone changed how they thought about the game this year. They really, they they didn't let themselves get in their own way. We we did we we needed to do academically. <laughs> They did what they needed to do academically. We had a couple of roadblocks here along the way, but we managed to come together as a team and overcome them. So just in brief, thank you guys. I, it was awesome this year. First of all, uh, it was a great year. I want to thank you guys for all your support. Dr. Jones coming to all our games, all you members coming to our games. Um, I can't take all the credit. Like I said, it was a team effort. We had a great coaching staff. I'm a big we and ours believer. We're the team. The team is ours. So thank you very much. Um, have a good evening. OK, so once again, and this is going to be a pattern, if you're on the football team, would you stand up so we can see who you are? OK, 
and my understanding is we do have cross country here, girls and boys. Come on up, great. Hello, and thank you for inviting us. I am Alisa Harvey, the head coach of the cross country team. We had a fantastic season this year. We finished second in the state, and it was absolutely thrilling. It's a, you, know, you start the season with about 60 plus kids, and you work on getting them all fit to run 5,000 meters as fast as they can. We had lots of, um, you know, aches and pains and injuries and this and that. And by the end, we had a fantastic crew of fun. Um, my, my assistant coach was a savior to me because he was able to be there at the state championships when I couldn't be there. So Coach Stewart, to be up here, thank Stan, please. <laughs> And at the state championships, we had a fantastic second place finish against a strong Maggie Walker down in Richmond. So I was so thrilled, and I got it between the texting and all that, I got the sidelines of how the meet went. And I'm thrilled. I want to have Truman, who was, is kind of our boys' manager, because it's two teams. It's girls' team were second, boys' teams were second. And I want to have Truman say a few words, and maybe Blaze, you can say a few words for the girls. Hi, I'm Truman Custer. Um, I was, we, we didn't really have any um, captains this year. We just kind of had guys that stepped up, and um, we had multiple guys um, step up. So guys, if you want to stand up. Um, we, we raced 12 times this year, not counting our time trial um, in August. Um, and we improved throughout the season um, we had six boys uh, get all conference, um, two get all region, and although we did not have any all state runners, uh, we all did our part and we all competed very well to bring home second place. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for the opportunity that you give us and the support you give us. Um, have a good night. My name is Lisa Vie, and if you guys want to go introduce yourselves. Um, I'm Anna Sawyer. <laughs> I'm Mia Sawyer. Um, I'm Megan Jenkins. And like Truman said, I just want to take a moment to really not only thank our hardworking coaches, Coach Sue and Coach Harvey, um, but also thank you guys for all your support. I saw Dr. Jones, I saw you there at States. It was really wonderful to see you there, um, and thank you for coming. Uh, just as like a small mention of, of our team, uh, we did, like Coach Harvey and Truman said, we, this year we did a phenomenal job. We worked with a small group of girls and we really powered through, taking second in districts, but then coming back with a first at conferences and then coming again in second just behind Mackie Walker in regionals and states. Um, we had phenomenal times and like I said before, thank you again, and we had a great season. We're looking forward to next year. <laughs> yeah. And I think those are all of our sports teams tonight, correct? My right hand over here? Okay. Congratulations to all of our, sport, our uh, fall sports. It was a great season. I love coming to watch you play. Um, and I mean, I, this was probably, this is my third year here, and it was probably the most fun. Um, it was just a really great uh, fall sports season. So thank you for letting me be a little bit a part of it, the watching. And you can stay if you would like, but if you don't want to stay for this big, long meeting, you are more than welcome um, to sneak out very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to you're gonna have to move your couch into the agenda of the year before. Okay. Yeah. You're gonna have to do all this part until oh, I didn't know yeah. I even had to do this. I'm gonna do all this until we because we don't really have agenda. Oh, okay. Which I like forgot. Well I didn't I didn't know that either. Okay. Yeah, this is new for all of us. Okay. Yeah. Yep.
I'm glad to see it. I love it when the kids come. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, first of all, let me say we're, I accidentally skipped an item. This is the first time that we have reorganized and organized um, in January. And so uh, given that we're organizing in January, that means that we, we really realistically don't have a chair until we reorganize. And I skipped the adoption of the agenda, which is 2.02. .02. Um, and so I need to call roll call. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Roll call, please. Okay. Mr. Ankuma. Here. Okay. Mr. Castillo. Here. Ms. Carney. Yeah. Mr. Lawrence. Here. Mr. Sharp. Here. Mr. Ward. His Ward. And Mr. Webb. There's. There we go. Sorry, all these S's and R's and W's. It's Okay, move to adoption of the agenda 2.02. .02. Move to adopt the agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you for keeping me My superintendent's report, I knew this was going to be a very uh, a long meeting because we do have a lot to cover tonight. Just really an update on construction because uh, we, we don't have that item on here and we only meet monthly and I want to make sure we always update you on construction. Cherry Street is uh, full steam ahead, and right now we are really um, kind of figuring out the outside color, but we were at the Architectural Review Board just this last week, on, um, uh, last week and we had a thumbs up, uh, excellent response on the design, and everybody is just absolutely excited about the building. So that's all I will, all I will have on the superintendent's report tonight. Next, we are going to... Um, look at item 5.01, which is approval of changes to the school board bylaws regarding the organizational meeting. And I might just um, take, the mo take a moment on this item and just point out that there is a document for your review um, that does outline a legal opinion uh, why we are having to reorganize tonight. Um, there were several people on the school board that did want us to look closely. Um, whether or not we had the option to organize still and maintain a July organization, July 1. We did have three different attorney opinions. They were all of the same uh, frame of thought that we must reorganize given that the intent of the law is for both bodies and both uh, legislative, your general body and also the school board to organize at the same time. And so you're welcome to read that if you would like. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the bylaws uh, as they appear on the agenda? So moved. All in favor? Yeah. Right, is there a second? Second. All in favor? Do we need a roll call vote or no? Sorry. Mr. Sharp, sorry, I'm not accustomed to being in this role, obviously. All right. Sorry. Uh, the uh, the bylaws have a uh, uh, terminology of uh, chair chairman and vice chairman, and I wonder if we might uh, entertain a, uh, a a more neutral uh, terminology for <clears throat> for this to chair and vice chair. To change his motion. Yes. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll accept the, uh, the amendment. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you. Uh. 
Okay, at this time, uh, we'll ask the board members to uh, place names in nomination for chairman, and I'll just read a quick statement that chair. says, it's chair, chair, I'll take off that man. I should get that right, shouldn't I? Um, and I'll read a quick statement that explains how the process works. After all nominations have been made, roll call vote shall be taken with each board member naming the person for whom he or she is voting. A nominee must receive a majority, four of the votes to be elected. The roll call vote will be repeated until chairman is elected. The newly elected chair shall then preside over the election of a vice chair following the same procedure. And at this time, I'll ask for the members to place names in nomination for chair. Uh, Madam Chair, um, I'd like to put the name into nomination for chair of Susan Kearney. Okay. Are there any other nominations for chair? At this time, Mr. Kimball, can we call for the vote with them naming also their selection? Certainly. Mr. Ankuma, Ms. Carney, is that who you'd like? Okay. Mr. Castillo. Carney. Okay. Ms. Carney. <laughs> Mr. Lawrence. Ms. Carney. Okay. Mr. Sharp. Ms. Carney. Ms. Ward. And Mr. Webb. Ms. Carney. Thank you, Ms. Carney. It's unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you. Take this meeting over, please. <laughs> <laughs> she says, take this meeting over, please. <laughs> <laughs> and I will. And uh, before proceeding, I'll just take a moment to thank my colleagues for once again um, electing me to this position. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased and honored to do, it, to do it for another year, and you just have no idea how much it means to me that you put this faith in me once again. Uh, moving right along, we're going to uh, elect a vice chair. And uh, at this point, I will ask for nominations for the vice chair. Madam Chair? Yes, Mr. Sharp. Nominate Justin Castillo. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. Are there other nominations for vice chair? John Lawrence, thank you, Mr. Ankuma. Are there other nominations for vice chair? Hearing none, uh, Mr. Kimball, would you please call the roll? Joe Castillo. John Lawrence. John Lawrence. Mr. Castillo. Mr. Castillo. I'll just take a second to say congratulations to Mr. Castillo on this um, on his election to vice chair. I look forward to working closely with you and um, as do I'm sure the rest of the members of the board. And uh, also just to take a, a moment to recognize uh, John Lawrence, who was the vice chair with me the last year for uh, his incredible hard work and engagement and the things he accomplished on behalf of the board. Uh, I, I, uh, you've earned my great respect and I thank you. Here, 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 here. All right, now we're gonna move along to a couple of uh, other housekeeping matters that we are required by Virginia law to do at the beginning of each of our years. Um, and the first is the appointment of the clerk and the deputy clerk of the board. And so I will, um, I will ask for a motion, please. Madam Chair? Yes. I move that the school board appoint Hunter Kimball clerk and Martha Goodell deputy clerk of the school board for terms ending December 31st, 2014. Second. Thank you, Mr. Sharp, for the second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? All right, very good. And, um, Thank you, Mr. Kimball and Ms. Goodell for once again being our clerk and our assistant clerk, and we apologize in advance for the way we will likely treat you over the next 12 months. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly appreciate all that you do for us. We really honestly do. All right, next uh, we need to set the date, time, and place of our regular school board meetings. Um, we have in the, for the past couple years, had our meetings at 7.30. Uh, this year we have decided to start them at 7 in deference to community members, students, and staff who uh, attend our meetings and would like an earlier start time. So is there a motion, please, to set the uh, dates and times for our meetings? Yes, Madam Chair. That I'll move that the school board establish a schedule 
of regular meetings on the second Tuesday of each month, beginning at 7 p.m. in the chambers at City Hall, and to establish a schedule of work sessions on the third and fourth Tuesdays of the month, beginning at 7 p.m. at the Central Office Conference Room, Falls Church. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. A second, please. Second. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And are there any opposed? Anybody want to start these at 8 or 9 o'clock? All right. <laughs> Very good. 7 o'clock. Uh, thank you. Uh, next is um, a resolution authorizing school board um, officials to sign special warrants. And there's a very, very long recommended action here for someone to please make the motion. Madam Chair. Yes. <laughs> Whereas the school board of the city of Falls Church, Virginia, desires to make payment of compensation when such compensation has been earned and is due for one, all employees under written contract, and two, all other employees whose rates of pay have been established by the school board or other evidence of service performed, and three, for payment of approved services, including contracts. And whereas the Code of Virginia at section 22.1-122 provides for the payment of compensation when such compensation has been earned and is due as stated above, and now therefore be it resolved that in accordance with the with authority granted under this amendment amended code section, this, the school board of the city of Falls Church hereby directs Tony Jones, division superintendent, or Lisa High, assistant superintendent, to issue and sign all special warrants, said special warrants to be drawn on the city treasurer of the city of Falls Church, payable from city school funds in payment of obligations described in the first paragraph of this resolution. These special warrants shall be countersigned by Hunter Kimball, clerk, or Martha Goodell, deputy clerk of the school board. Thank you, that was a mouthful. I appreciate that. And is there um, a second to second. it? Thank you very much. And all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, moving right along, item 6.06, .06, which is the uh, to approve a designated person to attend school board meeting in the absence of the superintendent. I just want to make a little bit of a comment about this. Um, Virginia law requires that the school board not meet without the superintendent, and it, this is its effort to make sure that superintendent school board relations are tight and are partner oriented, and that there's not secret, you know, stuff going on behind the scenes without the superintendent knowing. It's one of, I think, the most important laws that we have regarding schools in Virginia because it keeps tries to keep the superintendent and the board on the same page and working together closely. So the reason that we're doing this next thing, approving this designee, is because the only way we can have a school board meeting without the superintendent being physically present is that we allow a designee to sit, stand in her place. So that's just by way of explanation. So is there a motion to approve a designated person to attend school board meetings in the absence of the superintendent? Madam Chair? Yes. That this, I move that the school board designate Assistant Superintendent Lisa High to attend the school board meetings in the absence of the superintendent effective until December 31st, 2014. Thank you second. very much. Thank you, Mr. Sharp, for the second. All in favor, please say aye. Madam Chair, yeah. could I ask one question? Yeah. What, what, what happens in, if Ms. High is unavailable? She just, um, we've never had that situation. She just must be. <laughs> <laughs> that's the message from the board is one of the two of these fine ladies needs to be present and accounted for. Okay, well, look both ways when you cross the street. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> or don't ride with me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, maybe we should put something on here like, like a separate car rule for you guys. Ma um, ma Madam Chair, I think yes. uh, if uh, some situation should arise where we anticipate that both may be unavailable that at the preceding regular board meeting that we could adopt a motion uh, for uh, a, a another Enough. designee for for that particular meeting, but it would be just, you know, as um, a one-time uh, event, mm -hmm. and uh, we would come back to the regular appointees. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. Wonderful clarification. All right, so I think you asked that question before we actually got to the vote. So please, all in favor, say aye. 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 And are there any opposed? All right. Lisa High's picking up a lot of responsibility here tonight. <laughs> Uh, the next item on our agenda is the adoption of the school board's code of civility. I'm going to say a few words about this before we take action as well. Um, uh, four or five years ago, under the leadership of Ron Pepe as chair, the school board decided each year to adopt a code of civility that would signal to the community that we mean to deal with each other and with our constituents, our students, our staff, our colleagues and others with respect 
And so each year we have adopted a code of civility, and we're going to do that again this year. Each member of the board uh, signs it. Sometimes during the budget sessions, we have to remind ourselves that we've done this. Um, but I think it's very important. It's a, it's a, it's a signal uh, to us that we need to uh, listen carefully to our colleagues, that people's opinions are important and valuable, even if we don't agree with them, and that we need to behave uh, in the appropriate way on the dais and other places. And we hope it sets uh, an example for others in the community as well. So with that said, um, the Code of Civility, I'm not going to read it all because it is um, a little bit lengthy. It is posted on our website. Please go take a look. Or um, you can email Marty or Superintendent Jones, and they will send you a copy of it. Uh, once we've approved this, uh, it'll kind of go up and down the desk, and everybody will have a chance to sign it. So with that being said, uh, is there a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move that Falls Church City Public School Board adopt the Code of Civility as a standard to guide the school board members in interactions with each other and with the community. Thank you, Mr. Castillo. Is there a second? Second. All right. Thank you very much. And all in favor, please say aye. 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 And are there any opposed? All right. Thank you very much. I think this is actually one of uh, the most outstanding legacies that Ron Pepe left from his time on the school board and as chairman. So I'm going to pass this down to the left uh, to Ms. Ward, and if you'll just sign it and ship it down this way, um, then that'll be, that'll be wonderful. All right, next on our agenda, in a very unusual spot, is public comments and requests. I'm wondering uh, if we, I don't have any slips here with me. Um, Do we have any slips for public comment this evening? All right, very good. Are there any other letters that need to be read into the record, Mr. Kimball? Thank you. I, I had a chance to see this letter this afternoon. It was a terrific and very heartfelt letter. And I was absolutely amazed because the letter started by saying, I know you have a school board meeting this evening. I hope this letter gets there on time. And I thought, there's a person in Cairo, Egypt, who knows that we have a school board meeting this evening. <laughs> and what a world it is. What a world it is. Um, so thank you. And um, would you please be sure that a copy of that letter gets to all of the principals of our schools and uh, ask them to please make sure that all of their staff are aware of it because um, uh, I just think that was, it was just great and I, I want them to know how appreciated they were. All right, uh, moving on is, uh, next is business action information, item 8.01, which is the presentation of the superintendent's recommendation for the budget. So uh, I will turn it over to Dr. Jones at this point. Thank you, Mr. Kimball. Good evening to the school board and especially to our newest members tonight who are uh, on such an exciting evening to be reorganizing the superintendent's budget all on your first meeting. So congratulations. Um, I'd also like to say welcome. We have some staff here tonight, so I'm delighted to see, um, see them joining us as well. And I also want to take this opportunity, before I even present the budget, just to say a special thanks to uh, Lisa High and also to Hunter Kimball, who have worked uh, many, many, many weeks up until tonight um, to really work on this budget. So thank you very much. So we're going to get started. First of all, when we look at uh, the budget framework, I thought it was really important tonight to start um, by just saying how this budget was crafted. And it's hard to see these pictures in here just because it's so dark, but the very first one is a picture of a child. And everything that we do in Falls Church City Public Schools, we try to start by thinking what is best for our students, what is best for our children. 
And in the middle, you see a picture of the community visioning. And I know a lot of the people in this room uh, were at that community visioning this summer. And that really helped us um, get a collective group of people from around the community together to say, what is it that's really important for Falls Church City Public Schools going forward? And then on the right, that's a picture of some of our teachers that were uh, recognized at the gala last year. Because we always want to think about our staff, uh, not only our teaching staff, our administrative staff, support staff, and, and how the budget supports the work that they do on a daily basis is for our children. And when we look at the community visioning again, I think it's important um, that the community understand that we have these six different core strategies. First of all, with 21st, teach, uh, 21st century teaching and learning. And this is really looking at all of the aspects of what goes on in a classroom. And, and really, I almost hate to say 21st century now because we're 14 years into the 21st century, but we do still say that because it's important. Excellent staff, of course, that's what makes, I think, Falls Church City Public Schools so unique and special. Um, and really looking at, when you look at excellent staff and you go and you look at the actual work plan, it's also looking at things like teacher compensation, staff compensation. Also looking at modern and secure schools. This actually was a change after the visioning because we used to say small schools. But we realized that, guess what, we're not going to be small anymore. We're growing. And so, but having modern schools, and you actually see this reflected probably more in the CIP, which, I, which is our capital improvements plan that I don't present tonight, and that will be in front of uh, city council. Um, but that's actually a part of really looking at how we keep our schools and our facilities. We also have readiness for learning. And I know when I first came to Falls Church City Public Schools, this was probably one of the most unique pieces, I think, of work that the school board has done through the last couple of years that often people just don't realize. You know, all of our children in Falls Church City who qualify for free and reduced meals are all given free meals. Minimal, minimal cost. Um, this year alone, it, it is a community effort. We gave out more than 150 coats. And there are people uh, sitting on the dais and in this room tonight that contribute to that and this is probably children must come to school ready to learn and this community really supports that also small classes we've made a commitment and not tiny classes we're talking about a school board policy that is extremely reasonable to have small classes and the board policy actually changed um, from 08 where it used to be um, but again and I'll show you a slide in a little while that talks about class sizes and the last one was also um, an outgrowth of the community visioning, where we really felt like a strategy needs to be responsible fiscal management. Uh, we talked a lot about that at the visioning as a community. And out of all six of these, that is the one that I think is really the most difficult for us to self-evaluate. Because it's easy for us to look and say, yes, we have small classes, we have awesome teachers, but responsible fiscal management is something that we think we do really well, but it's always really good to have an outside source. And I commend the school board this year because they did commission an efficiency study with Gibson Consulting, which was enormously helpful uh, to Mr. Kimball and I especially, um, where we were really looked at. And right now you hear a lot about the efficiency study that Fairfax County did. Um, this is the same company. They've done numerous uh, school divisions across Virginia and all across the country. And they looked at, uh, we just got these results uh, formally last Friday, so the school board has seen them briefly. Uh, division management and administration, they looked at financial management, uh, human resources, technology management, facilities management, student transportation, custodial services, and food services. So it was a very comprehensive look inside to see if we are being prudent with the money that we're given to spend. And overall, we were thrilled. Now, it doesn't mean that we're not really tired, some of our staff, but we run <laughs> a lean organization. And I know at Central Office, our division leadership, they hear me say I use that word, so I was thrilled that they actually use the same language. We pride ourselves on running lean. All of our uh, administration carries two departments. Um, we've cut our administration costs since 2011, 6.1%. Our administrative cost, when you look inside the per student amount, and again, this is coming from Gibson, it's not the school board or my analysis, we've cut our students, um, cut the administrative cost per student 14.1%. And we're really, we're happy about that because that means we're putting more money in the classroom where our children are and where our teachers are. 
Um, we have two commendations, and there, there were several in the report, but I pulled these two out because they're two that we were, um, I think, most proud about. The first one is the position consolidations and changes. Uh, lots of support for how we are running as a small school division. Also, our shared services with the city of Falls Church was a commendation. And, you know, we start the budgeting process every year, and you will always hear people say, you need to share services with the city, you need to consolidate. And we really try to get the word out about how much we do. And this is a tribute to not only Mr. Shields and his staff, but to the superintendent and Dr. Berlin, who came before me. Um, they really, we've worked hard in Falls Church to consolidate everything imaginable that works for two organizations that are vastly different. A school division is very different than a city organization that has police department. Um, so there are certain things that don't consolidate well, but being commended for that meant a lot to us. Uh, when we look at the budget overview, I have slides on each four different areas tonight. Revenue and spending history, the challenges, which are the key impacts to our budget. Uh, what are some of the things when you look inside the budget that we want to do this year? And also just an overview of the budget request. The revenue and spending history, this is a pie chart you see every year. And that's really a green. It kind of looks brown up on the screen. <laughs> it's really a pretty green, I promise. But we pride ourselves on that big number and on that big green part. And you'd have to be the age of Mr. Kimball and I to understand we call it the Pac-Man effect um, because we really want all of those, those multiple colors that are together to be reduced because this is the amount um, of 74% that we spend on instruction. And we have seen a shift in the last two years where we are reducing our other categories and increasing instruction. And again, that's been our goal. This is our historic per pupil spending. The line that you see right at the top um, is where we are for FY14. We're just below back where we were in 2007, almost there this year, but what a difference it has made. It's allowed us to keep class sizes down this year and, and we're absolutely delightful um, that we were funded there last year. When we look at some of the challenges in this year's budget, I don't think this first slide is um, is news to anybody that we're having rapidly increasing student enrollment. And we will add more than 559 children in the next three years. That is larger than MEH in the next three years. Um, so I, growth is, it's happening. Uh, when you look at this increase and you look at it actually on the chart, you can see what our trend line looks like. The red line is where we'll be next year. Um, and just next year alone, we expect to add at least 172 students to our system. It's like adding a whole grade level, which is a lot for a little school division. This slide is one thing I don't think that our community, um, a lot of our staff aren't even aware of, that we are the fastest growing school division in Northern Virginia. And when you actually look at that top blue line, right now we're at 6.1%. You tend to think Arlington's growing, we're all growing. Um, you know, our budgets are relative to the growth that we're having. And you hear a lot about Fairfax County growth, but when you actually look at Fairfax County on the bottom, it's 1.5%. It's more students, because they have a lot more square miles, a lot more voters, a lot more. Um, but it's really incredible, the growth that we're having. Um, we also have a challenge just managing aging facilities. Uh, we have old HVAC, we have poor ADA access, uh, inadequate electrical and roofs and aging pipes. Not too big of a challenge that we don't manage, uh, but like right now we have a boiler, you know, that's uh, challenging for us, $150,000 just for one piece of equipment, which is a teacher and a para, when you think of it that way. We also um, haven't really thought a lot about a challenge of mentoring new staff. Um, we are also adding staff with the growth that we're having faster than ever in our history at Falls Church. And we're doing that, and especially for our teaching staff at a time when the craft of teaching is also changing rap more rapidly than any of us that have been in the uh, profession for many, many years have seen. And technology is a huge portion of that. Professional development is critical. We also want to maintain small class sizes. It's not easy. When you look at this chart, you can see in 2012-13 where we were, we were spiking at 24s and 25s. We added teachers on almost every grade level. Most of the grade levels still this year, when you look on the right-hand side, are right getting at policy level. Um, third grade and above is 24, K1 and 2 is 22. And when you see the arrow, that's just to remind you that you're really, when you're looking at grade level and whether you have a shift in grade level sizes, you're trying to follow cohorts of children. So going from fourth grade to fifth grade. Um, and you can see most of them went down one, but it's not like adding a teacher. You, we had great reduction because we had a lot of children come to our schools. We also need to close the gap on teacher pay, and I would say this is probably 
um, our greatest challenge that we have and, and for an issue that we need to resolve. When we look at our comparison to Arlington, our teachers are lower on every single step on every lane. Um, and it's not just that it's lower. If it was $1,000 or 2000 even, but when you look at the amounts and you look at a teacher who's been with us for 10 years, and if they can go a mile in the other direction, do exactly the same job, 13500 And if it happens to be a teacher who's been with us 15 years, it's tw just over $20,000. The gap is too large. We also have challenges this year, which we do every year. Uh, VRS is 22.8% increase. We have a city retirement increase of 8% in the budget this year. Healthcare is increasing 13 and a half. When we look at the budget priorities, this is more the fun stuff that we get to do inside the budget, um, which is how we really use the money um, that we're given. We have a three-year outlook this year for programs and services. We've really tried from the administrative level to look three years out because we know we have a lot of economic development coming down the pike, single family homes that are turning over. We really need to look beyond just one year. We have a four-year outlook for staff compensation. This budget does include uh, realigning resources. We have several of these things. I have slides on these like STEM and pre-K. This next one is really talking about connecting, closing the salary gap with increasing support. Um, I talked earlier about professional development. We have a 200-day contract. And in this budget, we're not asking to increase the contracted days, but what we are asking is to increase the days that our teachers are with us face to face. So in this budget, there is a superintendent's recommendation that we increase four professional days. And as I said earlier, we're desperate for those. And we're doing it right, right in line as we're increasing teacher pay. So those two things go together. We also know that we, have, we need to have the capability to um, recruit, retain, and compete for our staff. And those three distinct levels are very different. When you look at recruiting, we need to be able to get the, the best and the brightest out of college so they come with us and they stay on the new salary scale. We also need to be able to retain those teachers that I was talking about that have been here for 10 years. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different um, numbers, but on average they will tell you that if a teacher's been with us for 10 years, and they've gone through all of our training and they know our RTI process and they understand our computer programs and the power school grade book and all of the things that we do, we lose about $50,000 in training that leaves with them. Uh, and we start over with a new employee. Ret retention is really key for us, but also competing. We also don't want to be recruiting all first year teachers. We need a great balance. When we lose an experienced teacher, we need to be able to compete with that teacher who's relocating from New York or Georgia or South Carolina and offer them a position and have them want to be here. And we experienced that difficulty this year where we had teachers who were offered a contract in our division and our neighbors, and it was $15,000, $20,000 difference. And they chose to sign where it was gonna make a difference for their family. This is the four-year plan to close the gap. And when we do our work sessions, you'll see very detailed uh, salary scales. This, gap, this uh, graph could be much more complex. This is a very simplistic view. But just to show you where, how far the gap is now, and each year we're closing the gap. And one of the most challenging pieces is you'll notice the red line at the top, which is Arlington. And we use Arlington because they are the highest paid right now in Northern Virginia. Their gap, they also go up every year. We're always chasing a moving target. And I think that's one way, uh, one reason we got so far behind. We just weren't chasing quite fast enough. We also want to step in 1% for all of our support staff. Our division is very unique uh, because of all of our employees, and this is critical for us. We also need to adjust some driver salaries. Um, these are the people that drive our children to and uh, from ball games that are hours and hours away. And as I've discovered, over mountains and all kinds of windy roads, uh, we need to make sure that we can recruit our best bus drivers. We also need to adjust health aid salaries. This was something that was in the budget last year that went unfunded. Uh, we're that much farther behind. They are, these are the people that really are, you know, they have to be able to issue EpiPens and medication. It, it's become a job that's not like just being a school nurse used to be 10 years ago. We need small classes. And when you look at uh, kindergarten grew 19.5% this school year. And I think that it's just really important to recognize when we say growth, it's not just little bitty. Um, we have staff in this budget, primarily in this budget, it's teachers, 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 teachers. We have kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. 
We need teachers on all those grades. We need an encore teacher at MEH. We need world language hours at MEH. At high school, we're needing sections of math, science, history, and English. We're needing a special educator. We need to increase counselor time at TJ. We need to increase our assistant principal time at TJ and also Mount Daniel. Um, we need increases in music, art, media, world language at Mount Daniel. They don't even have full-time staff. They're big enough for full-time staff. We have to take care of that. Um, we also have a MEH special education liaison, which we've had a four-year plan to really get those positions in place. We have one at the high school. We added TJs this year because they're our next largest building, and this year we're adding an MEH. And we also have a request in the superintendent's budget for an assistant director of teaching, learning, and achievement. And this is really somebody that would work within our curriculum innovation department under Lisa, would be her only certified person in that department, because right now she's her single department, really, um, that can go out in the trenches and really help us. And we want to have a very specific focus on our ESOL program. We also, with modern and secure schools, in this budget we're adding a security playground support at TJ. We really need playground support, and again, this is a consolidated position where we also need another security position. We have security that we hire, which is very different than Securitas, because they have a security certificate, but we can use them in very different ways. And at TJ, we're really excited about the concept of having somebody who's security certified, but also out there with our students. And this is a position we're actually relocating from another site. We also, this is probably one of my favorite things, we're opening Cherry Street uh, Pre-K this year. And at Cherry Street, we have a pre-kindergarten model where we want to expand community outreach for aftercare. And again, this doesn't have as much of a budget driver, but you don't want to present the budget and have people think you left things out. We're trying to really connect more with the community. We talked a lot about having an aftercare program. It is too much for us right now to take that on. So I've been working closely with uh, Sophia, who's wonderful at Easter Seals. They've just opened a brand new facility. It's double, double the size. And uh, we're able to partner with them this year. We, we will be able to drop our pre-K children off there for those parents that want to partake in that and in partnering with them uh, as a local pre-K. So we're excited about that. We also have a commitment to fill our tuition enrollment. We really haven't done that the last couple years. We think that we can. And what that does is gives us a new philosophy for programming and planning in pre-K. Um, we also have 10 internship positions uh, for real-world project-based learning, and um, Mr. Bird's very excited about that. Again, out of the visioning, this was very strong. Our community wants a strong internship, project-based, real-world program in our high school, and the high school has a whole team of educators working on this right now, and they're looking for internship opportunities, and so this is actually one of our local ones that is going to be great to add next year. The structure for the pre-K has our Director of Special Education and Student Services overseeing uh, that building with a pre-K coordinator uh, for daily leadership support and then also able to schedule that child find. Again, that's a consolidated position so that we, instead of putting a principal in a building where there are four or five classrooms, uh, we're really excited to have Ms. Germer's leadership there and that's her expertise area. So again, it's one of those consolidated positions. We also have a part-time receptionist that will be based there, but we're moving staff uh, from another, and any staff I say we're moving, they already know. So I just want to clarify that too. And um, we are shifting staff from an existing position for the receptionist. We also are shifting staff from another location for a facilities caretaker. This is somebody who does have security certification, but with the only five classrooms, it would actually get kind of boring just sitting there. Um, and so this person will be able to do day custodial and light maintenance. So we're really excited about the business plan for pre-K and that it's very economically sound um, and we're able to use a lot of existing staff to make this happen. We also are adding STEM at MEH. We have an encore position. We want to make sure that we continue what we started at TJ. I've probably heard more excitement this year about that position and we want, we want more, not less. And so um, adding the STEM, actual a STEM on the encore for a teaching position next year at MEH. We also have a technology advisory committee that is working right now, and we meet again this Thursday. We have a plan that's in draft. We still have discussion to take place, um, but we know loud and clear we want to ignite personalized learning, and that's something else that you really hear around the country, that you hear um, about really where we need to be, is making sure that we're really individualizing what we're doing and starting to have more student choice and really keying in on where our kids are. We have a new funding strategy, and again, we'll share more of that during a work session. Um, increasing access for our students. You can go in every one of our buildings and they will tell you that. Um, it was very loud and clear at our last meeting. 
equity for all students. Um, I've had parents who have shared with me that, it, you know, it's a struggle um, because they want to make sure that every student has access, and it's so key now, um, and a cost-effective strategy. We really want, in order to have transformational learning, we want to move away from our CART model and secondary, and again, this will be, uh, you'll have a whole, I'm sure, work session just on this component. But when you look at the CART model, we do want to issue a device to our students this fall at GM. Right now, we have a CART model, which means that you try to put a CART in every classroom. And what happens as technology starts to spread, which it has at GM, um, the teachers all want a CART. And when they all want a CART and you have 65 classrooms, it actually takes you know, 1,800 devices, and we don't even have 800 kids there. It's a much more cost-effective strategy um, and for us to actually change in the fall, and we'll, we'll be talking about that more on Thursday night at our technology advisory. Um, we also want to do bulk purchasing. We have to make sure that when we do buy, we stop piecemealing. We've, we've been trying to limp along, but you get a much better price when you go out, and you can actually buy 800 units, just like you do on most things. We, this plan, actually, by doing a three-year funding model, bulk purchasing, and not staying with the CART model, has a savings of 700000 over the next three years compared to what we've been doing. Um, so it's, it's going to be very cost-effective, and we're excited about it. It also reduces the purchasing by 50% for student devices. Um, so, again, I know this is going to have lots of discussion coming forward. The, probably the biggest question we get from people who don't live in, I think, our teacher world, sometimes they'll say, well, just let the kids bring whatever device they want. Um, because we have the infrastructure for bringing your own device, and we do allow them to bring their phones and different items. But the piece that people forget about is that the model must support our teachers. And if you, know, I, I, if you can stop and think, and I know some of you just got a Mac Air for the first time this week, how it feels different just to be on a different device and figuring out how to use it. Um, for our teachers, they need to know what tools are showing up in their classroom. We're not ready right now to have a classroom with uh, 24 students and they have a Dell laptop, a Mac Air, a 10-year-old phone, a Kindle, and the teachers don't even know what tools they have in order to plan their lessons. And again, this is coming from our teachers. You'll hear from our teachers during this budgeting cycle, but lots of excitement for technology. And again, it really is about transformational learning. We also want to have one of the strongest hybrid learning um, programs in the country. And we have a high school leadership right now that is just so excited. They want to recruit staff specifically for hybrid learning this year. We've had a program in place now for just over, uh, I guess it'd be a year and a half, two years. And hybrid learning means it's a blend of face-to-face -face and also online learning. What we really need is high-level content. It's one of the most challenging pieces of hybrid learning. We're not happy with the content that we have, but we really need to go out and recruit the right people to help us build the content. And the high school's ready for that. We've gone from having four and five kids take a class with Nebraska or uh, maybe even uh, online with Virginia to, you know, 175, 200 students, and especially with finance and economics being a requirement, and a lot of students, but we don't want them to go and be bored to death either. We want them to have rich curriculum, so that's a real focus. We also, the high school um, has had this request in their budget. They also want to expand opportunities for eighth grade. They don't want to lose that connection. They feel like having a strong hybrid program actually allows the eighth graders that want to take an eighth class or a summer class with them and gives them more um, potential as well, and 24-7 access to curriculum. We want to expand, I'm going to say summer school, and then we're going to try not to say that again. We really want a new model for summer academy. Um, traditionally, summer school was just remediation. Uh, we're, we're seeing that change, and, and we're excited about it. We want to expand our course offerings. We want to expand enrollment in elementary and middle. We want more infusion of enrichment for all children. And so if you're there and you're having some literacy instruction, you're having mathematics instruction, let's also have some art or some music because a lot of our children that come to us in the summer don't have those opportunities on a daily basis and we know we can do some better programming for our children in the summer. And we also want 24-7 access for our online learning programs. Right now at Mount Daniel, they're reviewing um, computer adaptive online programming. They've had Waterford, which those of you who have had children in the system know, it's been there for 17 years. Um, we really need, and they may in fact go with a new version of Waterford that will run on an iPad, be 24-7, but we need to help them have the tools that they need to, to be 21st century and mobile, but also for parents. There are parents who can't or don't necessarily want summer access programs, uh, but they do maybe want to have their child log on twice a week from home and have access to our system. And when we've invested in a system, we want to see that happen. 
Um, the other thing, and I just put this on here because it's something that was unexpected, but we are experiencing cost savings of about 35% in our summer operations at George Mason by switching to the 24-7 hybrid model. Because we do have students who come in for their assessments and most of their work they're doing at home, um, we're actually only seeing them when they're ready to assess because they're able to do a lot of it virtually. We also want to continue with our MYP. This is really important to us. We started it this year in the budget. Next year's budget will begin the second year of MYP implementation. And in this triennial budget, we should be uh, a certified MYP by the time we get to the end of this. Readiness for learning. We want to provide more enrichment opportunities during the summer, support and enhance our ESOL Summer Academy. And again, this is something that's in the budget, but I want to point out that it really is a very minimal cost to us for being supported by the foundation. And Debbie Hescott has done an awesome job with the foundation. And I would say most of what's in our budget this year, the support is coming from the foundation uh, for readiness for learning. Also to support and enhance the MAX program, which is brand new, just started this semester. And that's where we really take students who need more support at high school. They're actually issued an iPad to help them have mobility. Most of these children do not have anything at home. Um, and again, this is being supported through the foundation and is part of our budgeting planning for next year. And um, I think it's really important to point out that since July, since July 2013, that's just this semester, um, we've received just over 100,000 in funding from donations um, and more than 252 BIU partners. We have a lot of support um, to help us continue with our curriculum um, efforts and all the efforts that are in our work plan. When we look at the budget request, we are doing a lot of realignment of resources. Uh, we're reducing four support positions, outsourcing two. Both of those are security, where we're adding um, Securitas. We are consolidating uh, 0.5 instructional to help create a new assistant principal position. We're consolidating that director role for pre-K leadership, reducing technology expenditures by going with a three-year funding model, uh, relocating some support, also consolidating in the custodial department. That's, uh, we have one position that was recommended through Gibson Consulting, and we're doing that. We are also going to be working on our central office efficiencies, and the cost savings there comes because we don't need to continually keep adding staff as we're growing. We're still trying to automate more, and Gibson Consulting is going to be helping us with that. There's at least almost a half million dollars in savings just with all the uh, realignments that we're doing. We also want to complete uh, in the budget this year the VRS rate of 3%. Um, to coincide with what we're doing with the brand new scales for teachers. This will also complete that 5% um, contribution where all of our staff are on kind of the equal playing field after FY15. And again, we want to do that as we're, in, in, as we're increasing the salaries. The superintendent's proposed, proposed budget is a total increase of 10%, and that would be a city transfer increase of 10.6. And it was not easy to get to that number. We still have a lot of unfunded needs and very difficult decisions uh, were made just bringing this budget to you tonight. Um, we're excited about the budget and we think that we've been uh, very fiscally responsible in what we're bringing. Our historic per pupil, again, this is that same chart you saw at the beginning, where we would be this year if this budget is funded is right about right exactly where we were in 2007. And if you apply inflation, it'd actually be lower. So we feel like it's a very, it's just, it's kids. We have more children coming and, and that's where the budget comes from. We also are expecting a 6.5% growth next year. So we expect that trend line when you actually look at that original chart um, to keep going up. And this is just showing where our trend line for enrollment, we, we showed this last year, we've reapplied what will be happening in FY15. You can see that it's, um, it's high. Uh, our enrollment just keeps increasing and our funding is just increasing about 1% from where we were. So we're very, again, uh, I just commend the staff. They have really looked internally at all of their positions. Um, no stone is left unturned when they bring their requests to us. Um, what could change? We still have a lot to happen between now and when the budget is approved. We have cost of competing, um, which we could have some funding restored there. There could be other state revenue. You never know with the General Assembly uh, what's actually going to happen. Health insurance could change slightly. We could have changes in VRS, again, especially with this being a big year at the General Assembly, and our city retirement could still change. We don't expect radical changes this year, but you never know. So we'll be watching closely at General Assembly. Um, we also have uh, two future dates. I just put two of the big ones up here. 
all of our budget calendar is actually online um, at the fccps.org slash budget. But we have a joint PTA meeting where we just kind of introduce the CIP, what's in the budget, what we've asked for, where we're funding positions next week. Elementary, middle, and high school uh, PTAs all join together. They did that last year for the first time. And then we have a budget work session on January 28th. Now, I will point out we have a meeting, a work session next week, but it's actually, I'm sure it will be budget, but it's not the official budget work session, so I didn't list it as such. Um, but I'm sure we will be having budget discussions next week. So that is our budget request of 10.6 in city transfer and a 10.0% uh, increase overall. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Uh, I, I very much appreciate uh, not only the clarity of your presentation, but you're aligning it with the three-year priorities that the school board set out in July after our uh, summer strategic planning with the community. Um, just for uh, the knowledge of the folks on the dais who are new, uh, the superintendent presents this to us tonight. We don't have a lot of discussion about it, so you're not going to be like asked to be smart or remember anything. Um, <laughs> If you do have questions about clarity, if something you don't understand, uh, we're going to kind of go up and down and see if people have questions about that. Um, the purpose of her presenting it this evening is so that the community begins to see what's in there, that staff starts to see what's in there and understand it. And so the board has a chance to take a look and start to formulate questions and internalize it a bit before our first budget work session, which uh, the superintendent um, outlined the day. So that all having been said, I will. Um, start with Mr. Sharp down there on my right. Um, do you have any clarifying questions for us at this point, Mr. Sharp? I, I think I'll defer for, for tonight. Uh, yep. Thanks Thanks very much for the offer. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. No, Mr. Webb, you're good. Mr. Castillo, any clarifying questions? Um, I, I guess on the technology front, is, is there a life cycle cost that we can focus in on sort of if we were to build in a recurring amount for how we would budget that going forward. I think that'd be really helpful. Um, it's interesting, I, I, I noticed a dichotomy a little bit of, um, you know, on the, on the one hand, there is the role of technology and differentiation and yet at the same time, there's, there's a great push to show attainment of certain skills across schools. And, and I guess, is that a, a tension that you're, you're trying to show something for everybody while, the, while you're also trying to differentiate? And is that a challenge to, to resolve? Or, or is that you, you can do those two things and they, they mesh pretty well? I'm trying to. And you can think about. I'm trying to figure out what you're asking me. <laughs> well, <laughs> now I know it's differentiation. Well, no, I mean it seems to me on the one hand you're you're talking about technology right. helping each student attain his or her potential, right. um, which is, which is great, and yet at the same time there are SOLs where everybody's expected uh, to show mastery or competence with certain basic skills, and and how do you do those two things at the same time? Or the answer is it's it's not all that hard. It, I just noticed that yeah, that seems yeah. kind of a. I think great teaching brings great testing results. So, you know, if you teach well and you have kids inspired and they're motivated and they're, they're loving their learning, then the SOLs are much easier. As long as the teacher's um, curriculum is, you know, focused on the right content. But it's, I mean, technology is just a tool. Mm -hmm. Okay, one, one last question on uh, the salary gap. How much of that chunk in the four year time frame are you looking to make up? Is it a quarter of it or I mean? Honestly, that's something for a work session because it's different at the beginning, the middle, and kind of the end. Um, and it is pretty, co it's complex, but it, it's kind of like a quarter. That's a simplistic way to put it, but it is a little bit different than that. Okay. It took quite a while just to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for those Thanks. questions. Um, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, I just have one, and Tony, thank you for going through such a large amount of information so incredibly fast. Um, on page seven, it's the slide in the lower right-hand corner, the four-year plan to close the gap. What, on the, on the vertical axis, what, what are those numbers? I mean, when I look at this, the first thing I think is we're, we're trying to, it looks like we're trying to increase salaries by 100% in four years. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm just wondering, the, the 0 to 120 on the left-hand side is what? Well, and to be honest, it's a very simplistic graph, and Mr. Kimball has a very complex one that we knew not to put up there. Um, so I would, say, I would say at the work session, we'll really get into the weeds and you'll be able to see it, um, because we actually have every step, and you can see every increase on every step on every lane and what we're doing for all four years. So we'll defer that. Yeah. Right. All but right. note it to be yeah. covered. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Ankuma, have you any questions? I'm sorry. Thank you, sir. Ms. Ward, have you any questions? No. All right. Thank you very much. Once again, um, Dr. Jones, thank you for that presentation. Uh, for the community's knowledge, this will be on the website. If it's not already, I'm sure John Brett will have it there within a moment. And um, <laughs> he's sitting in front of me shaking his head. And um, in, in advance of uh, our budget process, I, I want to recognize the in incredible amount of time that our staff spend between now and April 1st on our budget. And uh, they've spent tons of time so far, and it's only started. There will be lots of, uh, I, I would say, probably for every hour I will spend on it, the staff will spend five or six or seven. And so it's, um, it's a lot. So thanks. And we'll see everybody, hopefully, at our first budget work session. And check on the uh, web for the full budget calendar. There are one or two or three public hearings there where people can come and speak. And so just please um, check that out. All right. Uh, the uh, next item on the business action information is a discussion of, the of a school board member's proposal of a new school board committee structure, a board st committee structure. Um, and before we start this conversation, I just want um, everybody on the board to know that I did speak with Kieran this morning about how I was going to approach this matter, and he was uh, pleased with it. And um, so um, this is a discussion that is... Um, core to the board's governing ability. It's an important conversation about board uh, structure, whether we have committees or a committee of the whole or, or how we do that. And I want to commend Kieran's diligence um, in uh, pushing this matter forward and, and in uh, talking to people and, and thinking about it and so on. It's something we've, uh, I think this board discussed it the first time, if I can remember correctly, five years ago and then three years ago and then this last summer. and. The board's never been very interested in pursuing a different organization structure. But um, the way we, we try to run this um, board, at least in the past, has been that the first gate for any new idea is that the majority of the board wants to take up the topic. Because if the majority of the board doesn't want to take up the topic, we don't want to invest a ton of time in it. And so I'm going to begin this evening by just kind of polling my colleagues here on the dais about whether you are interested in us spending time discussing new organization structures uh, for the board, for board committees rather than simply a, a committee of the whole to change our governance structure. And I'm going to um, um, start, I guess since I started on the right last time, I'll start on the left and just, um, you don't have to say, you know, uh, a bunch about your reasons or whatever you want to, but, but Margaret um, Ward, are, are you interested in taking up this conversation or no? Yeah, microphone, please. Um, there you go. I am interested in exploring this topic, however, not necessarily at this particular meeting. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Ankuma, your sense? I am. Um, I'm, I've been used to it uh, working with the chamber, working even with the daycare advisory boards. It's a format I'm very comfortable with. I'm not sure uh, it, it may necessarily apply to every, each and every uh, situation that Kieran outlined. But I, I'm very open to working along that if, it's, if, it, if, it, if it makes our work here easier um, and more nimble if we have committees. So I'm open to it. All right. Thank you. Mr. Lawrence. I'm certainly open to the discussion. I just think we should wait till after the budget and, you know, when we have time to brief. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to go uh, to my uh, new vice chair, Mr. Castillo. Uh, yes, I think this would be a good conversation to have now. Have it now. All right, and um, Mr. Webb. Uh, yeah, I agree as well. I think it's a good conversation to have to, to discuss and look at opportunities that we can do to uh, do a little bit more di deeper dive of committees and then bring it back to the whole, uh, but potentially uh, have the more in-depth conversation after uh, the budget season is taken care of. All right, thank you for that. And Mr. Sharp. First of all, thank you, Ms. Carney, for bringing this forward several times and 
receiving kind of a uh, lukewarm reception. Maybe that's generous. <laughs> uh, Probably, yes. Uh, uh, description, uh, but uh, persisting and, and uh, offering it as a, a, uh, a way that many boards have uh, felt this was a, a way to uh, improve their high impact governance to um, support the success of a superintendent. And I think um, it, it is important that, uh, uh, that we try to understand carefully the, the uh, uh, kind of the ins and outs of what the, uh, first of all, the structure would be, and then what the operating of the structure uh, would be from there. Uh, and I'll just suggest that uh, as, as we approached this meeting, I tried to lay out some of the detail of what I felt was consistent with the theory that, that we had uh, been offered from an expert in this field, Doug Eady. Uh, I did uh, attempt to adapt it to our particular situation and to the kinds of, of focus areas that we had already begun to uh, engage in, in committee structure. And, and then um, for this particular meeting, I thought it would be perhaps appropriate to uh, suggest that the, the basics of a structure uh, to then turn uh, the discussion of more detail over to an executive committee group of, uh, I was suggesting four people, uh, but that you know, the overall intent is to bring all of the members into a closer uh, working order and uh, more efficient order. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the goal of the, uh, uh, the the goal of the work of the executive group in, in working out the detail would indeed, in my suggestion, uh, be to to attempt to involve all of the board members uh, in in the operation and uh, to consistently engage our important constituencies in in uh, consulting with us as we go through these these uh, different committee processes. Um, again, I'm, I'm fine to uh, uh, push the, the detail of this to, to another night, uh, but I, I would ask if, if there might be a, um, a board uh, preference for, for uh, asking uh, an executive committee type group to, to work out some details, come back with a, a uh, a recommended uh, mm -hmm. description of what this would look like uh, and that that could occur uh, within within the budget time frame uh, that, that at least that's my that's my suggestion that we that we begin to set out that that now and uh, you know but perhaps perhaps we'll get uh, to the point where we're beginning to uh, to operate on that system during the budget but then again <laughs> uh, there, there just may uh, may be more time needed for the for the review. All right, thank you, Mr. Sharp, for that. I'm gonna chime in myself now as the last person and say that um, I, I have pushed for this conversation in the past. Um, I'm not sure at this point what I think the outcome should be, but I think it's um, an important and rich conversation for the board to have. Um, I agree with several of my colleagues on the dais that I think that probably it's not the right time now to do that, given that we have a number of new members who are trying to find where their chairs are and get adjusted to being on this board. Um, who are going to be drinking out of a fire hose with our budget conversations here for the next few months. And that's just a lot, I think, to expect. I also think that um, it's very different to sit in the seat and experience it for a little bit before you make such decisions. Um, um, I also want to make a comment that um, I am I'm extremely impressed with Doug Eady and his work on uh, this and many other matters. He writes a governance column in the uh, American School Board Journal every month, and I read it religiously. At the same time, I would say that my conversations over the past five or six years with um, my colleagues in other school divisions and with people at VSBA, I've, I've heard an exactly opposite side of this question, which is waste time, ineffective, tough on staff. So uh, I think a good conversation about this is really, really important. Um, 
So it sounds to me like if I've heard correctly, I'm sorry, Maeve, I did not call on you. I apologize. You just need to raise okay. your hand to me, <laughs> sweetie. <laughs> I'll work on that. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to Mr. Sharp for his diligent work on this proposal. Um, mm -hmm. I know personally he's reached out to every member on the board, including myself, um, and gave me, you know, the the book by Doug Eady to read and uh, to consider this as well. So I've really appreciated being uh, fully looped in on this conversation and part of this decision and discussion. Um, I would also agree that it's probably best to postpone the discussion, um, but I would say that this is something that I have worked on getting started at the high school for our uh, student government association, working from a committee of the whole to smaller committees, and it has been very effective for our board at the high school. So Great, thanks so very much, and I apologize once again, but you just need to, um, <laughs> at any rate. Um, so it sounds like the consensus here is have the conversation, uh, not necessarily have the conversation now. Um, I think there are a couple of alternatives to next steps, and that's where I want to head next, is what our next steps would be. Um, as Kieran mentioned, one next step would be that this board would appoint a subcommittee to include two or three board members and our superintendent, whose job would be to go off and become expert in this and come back with a range of alternatives for deep discussion by this board and a decision. Um, I would say I'm not a huge fan of that because I am um, only too aware of the fact that over the next several months our superintendent is going to have more on her plate than she can generally manage anyway with running the school division and running our budget process and I think that's just a lot to ask but that is an alternative for the board. Um, the second alternative for the board is uh, to uh, schedule a work session on the topic. Um, to be held at the next open work session date where we could kind of have enough discussion to get our sea legs about what we're thinking, what the challenges are we see, what the problems are we're trying to solve, and come up with a process um, for doing that. Um, and uh, that might be um, at least my uh, preferred resolution. Of course, the third would simply be to say, woo, not so much. After we get through the budget, then let's take it up at a work session after the budget. So I think there are a few ways to, to proceed from here. And um, that's the place I'm headed next, is to hear from my colleagues about what they think maybe the appropriate direction is. And I'm going to start this time with Ms. Curtin. Um, I, I would say just a work session would also be useful. I don't think tonight is the option. All right, thank you. A work session. Ms. Ward. I am in, uh, I'm in agreement with Ms. Curtin. I'd like to um, explore this during a work session. Thank you. Ms. Drinkhammer. Thank you. Ms. Lawrence. Sorry, I, I think a work session would be good. I still think we should wait till after the budget because anything we decide in a work session is going to end up coming onto uh, the superintendent's plate, and I just don't want to add anything more to that before the uh, the budget's passed. All right, this end, Mr. Castillo. I feel strongly both ways. Um, I, I think I could see I I could see, <laughs> I, I, I could see um, the work session working if we do some prep work. Before then, mm -hmm. I, I think we we have a wealth of resources um, of new and existing members who have experience of one sort of another with mm -hmm. this type of, of committee organization, and I think flattening the board uh, somewhat. And so, uh, I, I if we can get a few um, ideas in place so we can have a good meaty discussion mm -hmm. at a work session, I think that would that would work well. Um, and, and I would say at the, at the end of the day, if it's appropriate, maybe we could hear from. We're going to okay, hear from good, the because I, Yes, as soon I, as I'd love to know how, how much free time you have to do some of this stuff. Yeah, but, we're definitely circling but, but back I, to I, her. I, the other thing I would say is that I do think we need to continue working this because I think this would be a good, this cycle would be a good beta test for us <laughs> to think about as we go through the budget how we would want to approach it next year with a new system, and. While we don't have, uh, I think it's too late to, to change what we do this year, mm -hmm. we shouldn't lose the opportunities to learn and to build for next year. Thank you. Very good. Yes, Mr. Webb. Um, I support doing it in a work session, and 
taking a little bit of what Mr. Casillo said to do, if we're gonna do it in a work session, to do a little bit of prepping for that work session to bring, so we can have a fuller and richer discussion about the, the process. All right, very good. Mr. Sharp? Well, I'm gonna just kind of head off in, in two, two directions here. One, one is, uh, thank you, Ms. Curtin, <laughs> uh, for, for leading us uh, with, with a, uh, a suggestion for work session. I think it's a very good one. And uh, you having had the experience of putting together this kind of uh, thing, uh, I think, is, is very instructive. Um, secondly, I'll just say uh, I, I, I do want to uh, not leave this evening without, without praising what the previous board did um, and uh, how, how, how much a giant leap forward the previous board made mm -hmm. uh, in, in many, of, many of the kinds of things that I think are very important to our success. Uh, one is that in terms of the budget, uh, last year we had 14.2% 14 14 increase uh, requested to our city council. When the VSBA executive director took a sort of uh, her own survey of, of what different school divisions were doing around the state, and she, she ran down a very, very long list of what school divisions were asking their general government to provide for them in terms of an increase. And she got, she, she went through and it was a 2%, 3% here, zero in some cases, two or three percent, all the way down a very long list. She came to Falls Church after a very long, long review, and she saw 14.2, and she said, that must be a typo. And she called our, our former chair, who happened to at that time be the VSBA chair, and said, is this a typo? <laughs> and, and Joan Wadiska said, no, it's not a typo. It's, it's what Falls Church is really asking to do. We were far, far and away uh, the, the highest percentage uh, request for, for budgeting in Virginia. Also mentioned just a little bit about the visioning and, and engaging the community. We had over 100 people, as, as I recall, 125. Almost 200. 100, okay. Uh, but but just, just, just in the one session, yes. we, had, we had 125, 130 in that, that initial session. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you would take the proportion of that and look at it in terms of the Fairfax County schools, you would have had to have a, have a session of 10,000 people in, in, a, in a single session trying to uh, ha have a discussion about the future of the schools. And so I would just say that, that, that there were some giant things that, that we did, and, and I, I, I don't, I, I don't want to leave here tonight with the, with the suggestion that, that we did not make great progress and that we did not have great results. We did. But there's also great challenges facing us. And, and as Mr. Snyder pointed out at the first meeting of the council, uh, he had received a, a uh, call from a, a, a fellow from China <laughs> saying, uh, I, I've, I've heard that Falls Church is the richest city in America. And what's your secret? Uh, what's your big industry? <laughs> yeah. And his answer was education. Right. Um, and so we, we, ha we have big challenges. I think we have also have a big responsibility to be a leader uh, in public education for our state, perhaps even for our nation. And so while, while we did tremendous things last year, um, I think we have the opportunity to, to, to do even better this time. And, and I want to thank those board members who've expressed the, the desire to, to work even harder uh, at doing this uh, and, and knowing what, what ha had happened last year, but stepping up to the challenge of attempting to do even better. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. Dr. Jones, do you have an opinion on this? Um, you know, at this point, what I would really say is that I, um, I'm always open to discussion, and certainly we will do our due diligence to help have an awesome work session. Um, I think that's, you know, what I've heard tonight. 
I, I would, and I, and I do say thank you for acknowledging that this is a huge, uh, a very busy time of the year for, for our office staff. And so um, if we could not put one more thing on the plate, it, that would, we would be grateful. Um, I would say during the budget season, you know, it's 70, 80 hour weeks um, for a lot of the staff because for me, I don't want to be in the office all day long. Um, I like being out in classrooms. I like going to basketball games. I like going to concerts. I try to be everywhere. And that means that you have to do a lot of the work that we need um, uh, with Mr. Kimball and I on Saturday afternoons when there aren't any school activities. So uh, thank you for acknowledging that. And that would just be my only request if we could put it off just a little bit. And even if it means we do a little bit of research along the way, you know, and share some articles and, and things of that nature. All right. Thank you so much for that. So. Um, um, here's what I th here's what we're gonna do based on me listening to all this we're gonna have a conversation about this um, dr. Jones and I and uh, mr. Castillo in our monthly planning session we'll talk about the timing of that and the kinds of information that we want to collect and get to the board um, in advance of it it doesn't sound to me like we need to rush to have it next week but rather to do it in a time um, that's appropriate I, I will let the board know that anticipating this conversation this evening I did um, put a call out to uh, VSBA and talk to our new uh, executive director, Gina Patterson, to uh, ask her if there were experts on this topic that she might recommend to come and meet with us and talk with us, or people that we should talk to to understand what the best practices are today. Um, I love Doug Eady, but his books are a little bit old. Um, and she's gonna get back with me. So I, I, can, I can see a path forward here for us, and um, we will report back to the full board about when we think that work session makes the best sense when we're prepared enough to have a fruitful and effective conversation. All right, thanks for that everybody. That was really very, very helpful. I, I appreciate that conversation. Um, the next item on the agenda is a new thing. It's called Future uh, Agenda Topics. And um, I asked uh, Ms. Goodell to add this to our agenda. It'll be on our agenda every single month. And um, I, I was thinking about this because I remember when I joined the board when I was new, I had no idea how to get things I wanted to be talked about onto the agenda. <laughs> and also that the way we've operated this board, generally speaking, has been when a, a topic comes up that a particular member is, has interest in, we like to poll the board and see if a majority is interested in it. If they're not, we put it to the side. And if a majority is interested in it, then we take it up and figure out the process, just as we've done this evening with this um, organizational issue. And so it seemed to me like putting an explicit item on our agenda each month where members will know this is the time to bring up something that you think you'd like us to discuss. And within the context of a meeting where we can take a quick poll up and down the dais to see if people are interested in taking it up would be a good thing. So just um, um, I'm going to stop now and ask this evening if anybody has items for future agendas that they would like to bring up this evening. Ms. Curtin. Um, I would just like to uh, propose uh, restructuring, or not, not necessarily restructuring, um, but adding new positions to many of the school board advisory committees. Um, I'm interested in seeing student liaison positions be placed on those committees. I think it'd be very helpful for me if I had people, uh, other students that I could look to who are um, working more detailed in certain departments and areas. I've been on the gifted and talented advisory committee and that's mm -hmm. been very helpful for me to have that expertise in that area, but I would like to be able to use other students' talents um, and I think it'd be a great way to get more students involved in uh, our school government. All right, thanks very much for that suggestion and I have to tell the community in this board that uh, Ms. Curtin has done a wonderful job of thinking this issue through and I've seen some of her ideas and so thank you in advance for that. Um, I certainly am in favor of taking that conversation up. Ms. Ward? Yes, Mr. Ankuma. All right, so yes, we'll uh, take that to our planning meeting and find a future date to bring that topic up. Thank you so very much. Anybody on this end have a topic for future agendas? Anybody on this end? All right, thank you. Yeah. I guess one thing is, is we think ahead to some of the, the, the results of the efficiency study. Mm -hmm. um, I would be interested to know if, the, if, if we're too lean in certain areas. Does, do, are, are there, are there staff slots we should be thinking about? Do we need a, CI, a CIO? Does the superintendent need additional staff? And so uh, I don't know when we build that, those thoughts in, but you can, you can be, no matter what they say, you can't be too rich or too thin. Sometimes you can be too thin. Yeah, well, we're and certainly not so. too rich here. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Um, I would say that we, we should have discussion of that during the course of the budget because um, we've seen that draft, we'll see the final. 
we'll see what the superintendent has done with that in the budget, and I think that is the perfect time to bring those questions up based on our, our perspectives. Um, all right, very good. And Ms. Curtin, thank you for helping us demonstrate the use of this agenda item. Um, all right, very good. The next is the consent agenda. The consent agenda this evening, we have a personnel item. Uh, we have school board liaison assignments uh, to advisory committees and boards, which I think this entire board has had a few chances at least to look through and, um, and uh, understand. And so um, uh, do we have a, a motion to approve the consent agenda? Madam Chair, I yes. will move that the board approve the consent agenda as presented. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or concerns, or shall I call the vote? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Very good. I am going to take just a minute to comment on the school board Pam, liaison. Um, nobody seconded Mr. Sharp's oh, motion. Oh, excuse me. I do have a cold. I'm taking drugs tonight. Mr. Nkuma seconds. <laughs> Oops. I don't get it's not just me. No. <laughs> um, do we need to revote? As well. Okay. All in favor, <laughs> please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Thank you for that, Mr. Kimball. Um, school board liaison assignments, a couple things I want to point out about this now that we have approved them. Um, one, these are drafted by the vice chair. This is one of the vice chair's key responsibilities. Our vice chair, for those who don't know, uh, has a couple key responsibilities. One is um, making these assignments and helping recruit people to be on these boards and uh, advisory committees. And the second is to coordinate the superintendent's evaluation, which we'll be doing later this year. Um, uh, I, I want to recognize John Lawrence and thank him and his role as vice chair uh, for working with this board to come up with this list. We appreciate that very much. Um, and second, I just want to take a second uh, because we have new members in the board and for all of us it's a good thing to just kind of review once a year the importance of board members um, engaging in their liaison assignments. One of the reasons we try to pull people and pull together things that you're mostly interested in is because it's really important that you go um, the folks that are on these advisory boards and committees are volunteering their time to help our schools. They're part of our extended leadership team, and we want to make sure that they feel that we value their contribution, that we're listening, and that we're sharing information with them about what we're doing here at the board. It's a wonderful opportunity to communicate with people who are engaged about everything that we're doing here on the board. Um, there are a number of them. So we did decide a couple of years ago that you don't necessarily have to go to every single meeting of every single group, although if you can, that is wonderful. But do talk to your um, groups and set the expectation if you, for how often you're going to be there. It should be at least every other meeting. That would be, I would think, the minimum. But every meeting, if you can do it, would be great. They really do enjoy having us there. Um, it's a great forum for telling people what's going on. I, and I tell you know, the things I'm a liaison to, I tell them what we're doing in facilities, I tell them what's going on with the budget, you know, all the key issues so that they understand, you know, what's going on. So that's my pitch to please, please go do these. Please and thank you. All right. Um, next on the agenda, uh, we're, we're cruising in here, our uh, board and student liaison comments. Uh, this is where we take a couple minutes to tell the rest of the board about things they should know about our activities with various community groups or other thoughts and, and things that we have. Um, I'm going to start uh, this evening once again with uh, Ms. Curtin. If you'd like to start with your comments, and then I'm going to start with uh, Kieran and move down here to my left. Uh, well, first of all, I would just like to thank Dr. Jones for moving so quickly through that. I'm amazed at what time it is right now and that we're at this <laughs> point at the night already. So thank you very much. Um, Mostly I'm excited because it means I might get to go see the very tail end of our rivalry game versus Clark tonight. Um, that's going on right now. 18-19 uh, at halftime, we're losing. Ooh. So it's a very Ooh. close game. Um, as far as athletics go, we've had a lot of senior nights. Uh, hockey was on Friday. Uh, wrestling is uh, tomorrow. And our seasons will slowly, basketball goes on longer. Those will be later in February. Um, but our winter sports are in full swing, and that's been very exciting to see uh, at the high school. Um, over at the middle school, we had Geography B this week, or last week, and um, a seventh grade winner. So that was very exciting. I heard from my siblings that they really enjoyed that, uh, watching that and everything. Um, and 
then I would also just like to thank you guys for being willing to take up the conversation on increasing student representation on the school board committees. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Sharp. Thank you. I'm uh, newly the liaison to the BIE, and they are meeting next, uh, well, within this week, I know. And I want to thank Michael for picking up the, uh, the chamber duties there. Uh, with the BIE, there is a weekly newsletter, and perhaps you all receive it already. Uh, if you do, great. I won't, won't bother to forward to you, uh, but I did, did want to check if everyone was getting that. Uh, last night, I received the National Mentoring Month proclamation at the City Council on behalf of the Fairfax Partnership for Youth. The partnership uh, is the local uh, partner for the National Mentoring Partnership, and it uh, conducts mentoring seminars every month. Uh, this month's one is on uh, the 15th, on, uh, tomorrow night. And for, for anyone who's interested in becoming a mentor uh, to a, a teen, uh, please, uh, please let me know. Uh, <coughs> but you can also find out uh, all the information on um, mentoring, training, and other things that the Partnership for Youth is doing at their website, which is fairfaxyouth.org. Uh, I did uh, go to the Easter Seals opening in December along with the chamber members. And I just want to point out uh, it's a great state-of-the-art facility. As Tony mentioned, it's doubled in size. Uh, it has a uh, all-year, basically all-day program, uh, 7 in the morning till 6 at night. And uh, it's really an, an incredible changeover from a warehouse <laughs> uh, to a really modern uh, educational facility and, and all sorts of environmental uh, green features built in. Uh, lights that come on when you enter the room and go off when you're out. Um, the, the, the parking and play areas are covered with pervious surfaces so that stormwater uh, sinks in. It does not, does not run off. <laughs> uh, and there is uh, solar panels all along the roof uh, so that they generate enough electricity that usually to run the facility without uh, tapping into the regular grid at all. Uh, so it's an amazing, amazing uh, piece of work, and uh, uh, I, th I think we, we can benefit a lot from, from a partnership with them. And I think uh, as we get into my next subject, the legislative area, uh, I think it will be one of the things that we'll hear about as a legislative matter this year. And, uh, in terms of advocacy, I think it would be good for us to, uh, to partner with uh, folks, folks like the Easter Seals and other providers so that we, uh, we increase the opportunity for uh, parents to have a good choice uh, in uh, daycare and preschool uh, to prepare them for the, the Falls Church City Public Schools when they're, when they're coming into our kindergarten and, and our, our special needs preschool. Uh, I also want to thank Margaret for uh, agreeing to pick up uh, legislative type uh, things to do and I look forward to meeting uh, with her. There's, there's a lot to try to keep track of during this busy legislative period uh, and if any of the other members have questions uh, in a technical way I'll be happy to, uh, to try to uh, help in, in uh, citing the resources and things that would be helpful there but, but uh, my job is uh, one where I would have a conflict of interest if if I participated at a, uh, at a high level in those, uh, in those workings. So um, again, thanks to Margaret for pick picking that up. Thanks. Mr. Webb. Thank you very much. Uh, being this is the first opportunity since uh, getting elected in November to talk a little bit uh, publicly, but I first want to thank uh, the citizens of Falls Church for entrusting me with this opportunity to serve the community in this capacity. Uh, hopefully that the years of experience working in higher education can translate into giving a different voice and perspective to to the board. Uh, I want to thank my colleagues. I'm looking forward to working with each and every one of you to the school board staff. I'm looking forward to working with you. I've already started working with you and you all have been very helpful in the transition coming from one side to the other side and it's been a very good and easy transition thus far. Uh, thank you, my family, in particular my partner Clifton, for allowing me the opportunity to once again 
uh, give up a different night of the week, but another <laughs> night of the week uh, that I will not be at home in several evenings uh, along the way. I uh, wanted to uh, acknowledge him and thank him for giving me that opportunity um, and looking forward to rolling up my sleeves, getting getting going with the budget because we're hitting the ground rolling, all, all of us new folks here. Thank you. Well, I, I'd just like to uh, commend Mr. Sharp for his hard work on uh, laying some of the groundwork for committee initiatives and, and for engaging the, the board as, as well as he did. Um, I think he's absolutely right that what, what we accomplished last year sets a high bar. And, and I have to say I'm extremely excited about this board. I think the obviously the people who are here as incumbents bring a lot to the table, but e even more so I think the mix um, you know, we have the higher education perspective from Lawrence. Margaret has her teaching and law backgrounds. Michael's got his, his business and organizational um, attributes. I think we've got a, a great chemistry, and I'm looking forward to uh, working with, I think, also a very good council. Um, I also would echo something that I may have mentioned from the VSBA convention way back in ancient history in November uh, about some green initiatives. Arlington is doing some amazing things, I think almost crazy things like geothermal even. And I think um, there is a lot of un untapped potential on green initiatives that we should um, start integrating into how we look at what we do. Um, they, Arlington does even things, so it wasn't Arlington, it was a different jurisdiction. They have recycling contests between the city and the schools to see who can recycle more. Um, I'm not sure we want to take competition to that level. But we would, uh, we would win, right. okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we can arrange a handicap situation. Um, I, I was at the uh, cable TV. <laughs> I was at the cable uh, TV advisory committee last week. Uh, that's an amazing place. Um, they continue to do a phenomenal job with some amazing resources and. Uh, Anybody who's interested in uh, video production technology, uh, I think really should, and, and the great work they do here, should, should check them out. Um, I would also commend the superintendent who's getting up with me tomorrow at 7.15 to talk about the next technology advisory committee meeting to catch me up because I missed it and we'll be meeting on Thursday, I believe at 6, is that right? Yes. Um, and, uh, uh, I would also like to, uh, to commend the, the work that John Lawrence has done and will be doing. I, I look forward to his contributions on facilities and many other uh, and facilities, especially the Mason Project and many other aspects of, of what this board does. And uh, I'll stop talking now. Thank you. And I don't mean thank you for stopping talking. I mean thank you for your comments. <laughs> Mr. Lawrence. Um, just a, a couple things. First, welcome to all the new members. And after Tony's presentation, I think you're probably questioning why you did this. Um, yesterday, I went to the, the Gifted and Talented Committee, and, and Lisa was there, and Maeve was there. And I'm happy to say they're already working on how they address the visual and performing arts and the, uh, the CTE, which I can't remember what that stands for, but career it's something and career education. and technical education. That's the tip of my tongue. Um, how they incorporate that as part of, you know, what we said we wanted to do in our triennial plan. So that's, you know, their first meeting and they were out of the box and I'm sure Ms. High will make sure that everything gets done. Uh, <laughs> next week, uh, we're actually hosting our, our first ever Waby meeting in, uh, over at the new TJ library and uh, the keynote speakers will be, uh, Dr. Jones and uh, Principal Shahid to talk about STEM. So uh, that, that's a first for us. The, we had a couple Cherry Street ASACs last week. And for anybody who went to the first meeting, where it was basically the, uh, you know, the community out in, with torches and pitchforks up at Mount Daniel, it's now to the point where the only question is, is the outside one color or another color? So Dr. Jones has done a, a wonderful job of taking something that was hugely contentious and making it something the community wants. The teachers are happy and uh, it's, it's a huge turnaround from the summer. So that was, that was excellent. And other than that, the band boosters have been delayed at least once because of snow. Hopefully we'll meet tomorrow and uh, I'll report next time. Thank you. Thank you very good. Mr. Ankuma. 
I think I'll echo uh, Lawrence's comments about that and thanking everybody for, for having us here. Um, initially, I thought Susan Carney was a good friend until she dragged me here with the help of Kathy Kay. Um, <laughs> after what I've heard, I'm not sure <laughs> this was such a good idea. But anyway, we're already here. So, um, uh, One of my assignments was obviously the, day, uh, the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, liaison, and so I was there this morning on uh, replacing, uh, oh, well, stepping in Karen's shoes. Um, not much going on that affected us, but um, I believe the what was of note to us was the Lincoln and Rushmark properties, I believe, have groundbreakings coming up maybe in the next couple of months, so I guess get ready for more kids. Yeah. Um, and then the only other uh, event coming up actually closer was uh, April 5th, we have the Chamber of Commerce Gala at the West End up the street, just before Tyson's, and that's on, right, April, Saturday, April 5th, so just thought I'd let the folks know about that. Um, otherwise, I'm uh, looking forward to uh, jumping in with two feet and uh, thanking Marty and Hunter and Leisha and everybody else for make. and uh, I was at the uh, office yesterday with the IT guy, Rick, Rick, Rick right, Jeff. for getting us all this stuff that we still don't understand, but we'll find a way to to figure out, so thank you, everybody. Thanks, Ms. Ward. This is part of the initiation ritual. <laughs> you rigged it, huh? Um, first of all, I'd like to thank um, the, um, the existing board members before this incumbent board, for this new board, rather, um, for all of the support um, you've given to me and as well as to um, Lawrence and um, John, we, we've had a, um, it's, it's been really nice to get acclimated before the first meeting. And I, I know you all have spent a lot of time speaking with us and sending us emails and Tony too, including us, um, Marty as well, including us on all the emails and uh, making us feel welcome before we took our place on the dais. Um, so I want to thank you all for that. Um, it's made today a lot easier for me to transition. Um, <clears throat> I would like to report on the athletic boosters. I went to their meeting um, last night as the school board liaison. And uh, the big news there is they um, signed their contract on um, updating the baseball and softball lights. Um, they're hoping to have those up and running um, in time for baseball and softball season. And they're going to have a um, dedication ceremony and they're looking to put in a donor board along with that. Um, but the really big news is they have a K cup now um, at the concession stand and they're hoping for a second one by next football season. So we'll have K cup coffee at the football games. Um, <laughs> And uh, also along that similar vein, they are thinking about bringing in vendors to the outdoor um, events, and that would include things like Famous Dave's Barbecue and Dippin' Dots. So they're still in the process of figuring out how to work that out, but um, you know, something to look forward to next fall, kids. <laughs> wow, all right, thanks very much. Um, uh, for my part, I would say a couple things. First, I'd like to welcome my new colleagues. It's uh, really a pleasure to have you here with us, and I will echo what Justin Castillo said, which is I think you bring unique perspectives and a richness to this board um, that uh, we'll all benefit from, from the kids to the parents to the community to, to uh, the staff. Um, second, I want to thank Dr. Jones for um, including a recognition of the Foster Church Education Foundation in her budget presentation. I've had the pleasure for the last two years, I guess, of being the board's liaison to that group. Um, uh, Lawrence Webb is stepping up and doing that you know, from this time forward, but I've thoroughly enjoyed working with them. I think that over the past two years, they have stepped up incredibly under the leadership of Debbie Hiscott. And to see on that slide that they and our businesses have contributed $100,000 to our schools just since last summer is just absolutely incredible. So thank you for recognizing them, and I want to recognize them and thank them. Uh, as well myself and um, uh, the last thing I'd like to do is congratulate our new city council members and our new uh, mayor for their elections and our vice mayor for his re-election as vice mayor we're looking forward to working very closely with you if you're watching and listening and a happy new year um, 
With that, the last thing on our agenda is uh, approval of minutes. We have two sets of minutes from November 19th and uh, from December 17th meetings. And uh, what I'd like to ask is um, unanimous consent from the board to approve both of these sets of minutes. And seeing no objection, <laughs> so ordered. All right, there are a couple of materials for board review. These are usually things that are presented in the course of the, of the uh, meeting, but uh, we're not this evening, but they are very, very important. You'll notice there's the monthly uh, enrollment report where it tracks by grade, the fluctuation in students, and um, it looks like overall we are flat this month or maybe a little bit down. However, our kindergartners seem to continue to be growing. And I might just add, our trend is usually to go down in December, January, and we already know there are several students that are enrolled and in our system that just haven't started and are starting within the next two weeks. Um, so it'll go back up again. And by the end of last year, it actually uh, spiked higher than where, where we were on our October count. And not that this has anything to do with enrollment, but since my mother is a new uh, resident of Falls Church, I have to say hello because she's discovered FCC TV and she's watching tonight. <laughs> All right. Hi, Tony's mom. We're glad you're here. Oh, that's great. And then the other is the uh, monthly uh, financial report. Generally, this is something that Mr. Kimball presents to us during the course of the meeting, and in the future he will as well, that shows us kind of our, our spending expected uh, kind of through the course of the year. So please take a look at that. If you have any questions about it, then Mr. Kimball will be happy to answer them for you, I'm sure. And uh, unless there are other items, we will adjourn for this evening. All right. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you, staff.